Hello, you are listening to the Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer and Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now today I've got something special, hopefully for you, maybe a little bit unusual for you. Usually on the Natural Healing Show, I interview experts in natural healing from all over the world. Today, however, I have a very special message for you, which is about how to take your power back and live a soul-directed life. Now, during this coronavirus pandemic, you know, we are receiving a lot of really upsetting information. There's about 3 million people all over the world who have coronavirus. This is real. When I go out, I wear a mask. I take my supplements. I definitely pay attention to the World Health Organization and their admonitions about uh, the coronavirus pandemic. But one of the things this has created is a tremendous amount of fear. Now, fear, if you understand natural healing, affects your kidneys. And when we are in fear, your brain goes into the reptilian brain where you're in fight, flight, or freeze. Now, when you're operating out of the reptilian brain and in fight, flight, or freeze, you're not accessing the frontal lobes of your brain which is where you access your wisdom. You access everything you've learned. You've accessed your higher mind. And above all, when you're in fear, you don't access your intuition, which is the information that you're receiving from your soul. So I live my life prayerfully, and I was directed to give you this special message about how to take your power back even during the coronavirus pandemic. So on the one hand, we're dealing with something that's real. We're dealing with a global health threat that is affecting all of us. It affects the way we live because we're having to be in quarantine. We have to think about where we go, who we associate with, and how to keep ourselves safe from the virus. And yet on the other hand, it's also affecting us mentally, emotionally, energetically, and spiritually. So let's talk about what happens when you lose your power. Now, when you lose your power, part of what's going on is that on some level, you've come to the conclusion that there's something outside of you that is more powerful than yourself. Now, before any of you spiritual people start waving your hands in the air, Please know that I live my life prayerfully. I pray all day long. I wake up, start praying. I ask for guidance in everything that I do. So in my view, we're all being directed by a higher power that I refer to as God. But when you give your power away, you give your power away to the government, to the news, to a political party, or to this pandemic that we're all experiencing of fear. Now, how do you know that you're giving your power away? When you feel unempowered, when you're unsure of yourself, when you're not clear about your own direction, part of what may have happened is that you've given your power away. Now, let me give you some examples of how people give their power away. So for example, if you go to a medical doctor and you are given a diagnosis. Well, this diagnosis may be absolutely scientifically correct. However, do you give your power of healing to someone outside of yourself? Now, whether you work with traditional or alternative people or traditional or natural healing people, it's important that you remain in charge of your health and well being. And what by, I mean by that is that you go within you and you listen to the people who are advising you and you come to the conclusion about what is best for you. So for example, if someone has high blood pressure, 
there may be 20 possible ways that you can heal high blood pressure, but two or three of those are gonna be most effective for you. So when we stay in our power, we listen to the experts, but then we go within and decide what is right for us. Other examples of how we give away our power. So for example, many women, and I'm a woman, we give away the power, financial power to the men in our lives. We decide daddy's gonna take care of me or my spouse is gonna be taking care of me rather than knowing and experiencing I can take care of myself. And many women that I've worked with over the years feel a tremendous surge of personal power when they take control over their finances. And what that looks like could be, you start understanding how your money works. You understand how your investments works. You understand what happens when you deposit your paycheck and how you pay your taxes and the, your household expenses. And you take control over the intake, which is what's coming in and also the outtake. I remember growing up, I was always deeply inspired. I grew up in the American South by stories of women who grew up in Alabama and they worked their whole lives as maids. But when they died, they left a million dollars to the United Negro po po uh, College Fund. So even though they didn't make a tremendous amount of money, they used their own power. They made a choice to save even a little bit every day to make a contribution to a cause that they really believed in. So there are many ways that we can give away our power. And during this time of the coronavirus pandemic, I believe that many of us are giving our power away to the fear, to the anxiety, and under the conclusion that we're actually not in charge. Now, no matter where you are in the world, if you're listening to this broadcast, you are a soul, in my professional opinion, and because you are a soul, your soul is always receiving soul guidance. Now, most of us refer to your soul guidance as your intuition. I use the words, the terms soul guidance and intuition interchangeably because to me, they're the same thing. When you receive intuitive information that is guidance from your soul. You have to understand what it is and where it's coming from. So when you learn to trust yourself, you can receive the guidance that your soul is receiving. You can receive it, take it in, trust it, and then take actions on it. So there's really three parts to that. The first is you have to understand how your soul receives intuitive information. And um, as many of you know, I'm the author of 10 books at this point, and I'm gonna be talking about information in my book, Unlimited Intuition Now, which you can get in paperback, uh, ebook, or also audiobook. So if you don't like to read, you can listen to Unlimited Intuition Now. So the first thing is you have to understand how your soul communicates with you. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later in this broadcast. And then you have to create space in your life where your soul can communicate with you and you can listen. So what does it look like? Having time for prayer, having time for meditation, having quiet time in your life. I'll never forget years ago, a woman who was a handwriting expert analyzed my signature and she said i can tell that you're psychic by your signature because there's space <laughs> in between your letters so you have to create space in your life and this is quiet time when you can actually tune in the word to me intuition means tuning in and you have to be able to be in tune with yourself in order to be in tune with this goal side soul guidance. So you have to, number one, understand how your soul receives information. Number two, uh, create space where you can receive this information. And then once you have received it, then you wanna process this. What does this mean? You process it. And the third step is take action on 
the guidance that you receive. So the example that I frequently give was in 2018, um, my soul kept guiding me to write a book about breathing. Now I'm like everybody else. And I argued with myself, who's gonna read a book about breathing? I've taught yoga for 25 years. I've read many, many excellent academic books about breathing. But my soul kept insisting. Finally, in March 2019, I finished the little book of breath work. And if you're listening to this broadcast from anywhere in the world, if you send me an email, Catherine at CatherineKerrigan.com, I will send you a free copy of the little book of breath work. I'll send you the ebook. And I've now given this book, the little book of breath work, away to people in 12 different countries during the coronavirus and pandemic. And part of the thing about breathing is that your power actually resides in your breath. So if you're holding your breath, or if the two sides of your breath are not balanced, you're stuck in the sympathetic nervous system, which means you're gonna be stuck in the fear. So one of the simplest ways to move out of the fear and to find your inner peace where you can receive your soul guidance is through breath work. And for many people, they find that breath work leads to that quiet place where your mind can relax and you can actually move into meditation. So you wanna understand how you receive information. You wanna create space in your life and then you wanna act on it. So after arguing with myself about a year and my ego mind really slipped in there trying to decide that this didn't make any sense. I followed my soul guidance. I wrote the little book of breath work. And now a year later, it makes total sense why my soul kept insisting that I do that. So what does it mean to live a soul directed life? How does our native intuition empower us to understand what it is our soul is being led to experience in this lifetime? And how can we transcend beyond the chaos and suffering of the world we live in to be guided to all that leads to our happiness, soul purpose, abundance, and life meaning. So by following my soul guidance, I am now prepared during this coronavirus pandemic, which affects your lungs, to give from my soul to your soul this book so that should you or any of your family members have difficulty breathing, you'll know some natural healing techniques that will help you to breathe more easily. And also when you practice the eight minutes to inner peace, which is a little breath work routine that I describe in the little book of breath work, you can usually cut your anxiety in half. And we have to remember that when you're in fear, your ego is in, is in charge. And when you're in peace, and when you can quiet your mind, that is when you can receive your soul direction. So uh, I, at the age of 61, I still teach six yoga classes and one Qigong class a week. I'm very dedicated to my practice. It's part of how I keep my energy balanced. It's definitely my mental health program. It's definitely how I keep my energy high. And um, so I'm very happy that I have this book to share with you. So again, today I'm talking about how you can take your power back by listening to your soul guidance. So this ego battle that I described where my ego kept saying, why should you write a book about breath, breathing? Who's gonna read it? Who's gonna make any money? How are you gonna make any money about it? This ego battle, is something that many of us have experienced where your soul directs you to do something, your ego mind wants to argue with, with you about does this make any sense? Um, but one of the things about your soul guidance is that it will keep insisting. Now, when you receive information from your soul, it's always friendly, it's kind. There's this tremendous amount of lovingness in the receipt information that you receive from your soul. If you receive information and it's frightening or scary or alarming, 
It's not guidance from your soul. Your soul will persist gently. You may get woken up in the middle of the night. You need to do this thing. You need to go here. You need to meet that person or follow this path. Your ego mind wants to understand everything. Why? For what purpose? How will this pay off for you? And this is often the nature of the battle between the ego and the soul. So, but you will keep receiving intuitive information, even if it's way in advance and doesn't make any sense at the time. All the time, your ego wants to walk away, not follow your soul guidance, and go off in a direction that maybe appears to make logical sense. So in my case, after undergoing this inner turmoil for about a year, I finished the Little Book of Breath work in March of 2019. And as soon as I finished it, I understood why I had to write this. Um, the book includes breathing exercises, hand mudras, which are little simple gestures you can make with your hands, and affirmations. And it, again, it will help you get out of the anxiety. And um, if you do the little bit of uh, the, the eight minutes to inner peace routine, you can usually cut your anxiety in half in about eight minutes. Psychiatric anti-anxiety medications don't even work that fast. Plant medicine, herbs, and flower essences don't work that fast. So the little book of breath work became the ninth, uh, my, it was my ninth book and my seventh out of eight Amazon number one bestsellers. So it wasn't until this year of course, it became abundantly clear why I had to write that book. But now by following my soul guidance, I'm totally prepared. So again, in this talk, I'm going to be talking to you again about how to take your power back. So I want you to pause if you're listening to this broadcast, and I want you to think of the ways that the coronavirus pandemic has affected you. So beginning with yourself, has this affected your daily routine? So maybe you're quarantining or depending on where you live in the world, I have friends, for example, in South Africa who've not been able to live their, leave their house um, for months on end. So how has it affected your daily routine? How has it affect your personal health regime? Maybe you're taking more supplements or you're wearing a mask. And all of these things are good and I encourage you to do things, continue to do things. I myself just ordered a special mask that has a HEPA filter and UV lights in it. Um, and I saw that it was gonna be much more effective than conventional masks. Now I want you to stop and ask yourself, how is the coronavirus pandemic affected my family? So maybe, your children have had to go to school online and they've been not able to attend regular school with their classmates. Or maybe it's affected your family gatherings. Maybe you're not able to see family members like you usually do, or it affected your travel or vacation plans. Now, as you notice how this has affected you personally and your family, I want you to notice what are the underlying conclusions that you have about this and again i want you to notice where you've given your power away because your personal power resides in the understanding that in every single moment of your life you're in charge and you get to make choices about what is best for you and again what is best for you may be wearing a mask it may be, you know, not going certain places at certain times or changing your routine. But notice any place where you have decided that something outside of yourself is more powerful than yourself. Now, how do you begin to take your power back? So one of the ways we take our power back is by owning that we have the power in every moment to make choices that are best for us and that no matter what other people are telling us we get to decide ourselves what's the best way for me to live my life at this time 
Now, another way that the coronavirus may have affected your personal power is economically. So perhaps you've lost your job. If you've lost your job during this time, my heart goes out to you. I'm very sorry about that. Um, it, if you're self-employed like I am, perhaps it has affected the ability of people who you work with to be able to pay for your services. Um, many people around the world do not have the safety net that people in the United States and the United Kingdom have. So many people are affected, even their food supply has been affected by the pandemic. And I believe that I've read, I believe Oxfam says that more people may die of famine as a result of the coronavirus pandemic than of the virus itself. But even economically, go into yourself and find out where have you given your power away? Have you decided that during this time it's not possible for you to make a living or not possible for you to make as good of a living as you would like or not possible for you to get the job that you want or the opportunities if you want? In natural healing, this is called acceptance of the negative. And there's a difference between, in my view, uh, dealing with the grounded reality of what is happening and also the grounded reality of the choices that you have to make. So in this moment now, I encourage you to take your power back. And part of the way you take your power back is by honoring your own talents strengths and abilities and that no understand that no matter where you are in the world there are people who will value your talents your experience your everything that you have to give in the world and own your power own your gifts and services and talents and make a choice so that you ask guidance your soul guidance to be directed to all that leads to your highest good. So whether this be for your health, whether this be for your money, and also even in your relationships. So taking your power back. So when I came to the global pandemic party, I was totally prepared to help people to serve from my soul to your soul because I had written a book that followed my soul guidance, which was the little book of breath work. Um, so the research shows that in the United States, over 30% of adults have been experiencing clinical levels of anxiety and depression during the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, George Floyd, a black man killed under the knee of a Minneapolis policeman repeated, I can't breathe. Now, we who saw the photograph of George Floyd losing his life through police brutality had our own breaths taken away, our hearts collectively broken by the impact of centuries of systemic racism. We all need to learn how to breathe through this challenging time, through the anxiety, through the justice, injustice, through the chaos, through the depression, grief, loss, and uncertainty. And because I followed my gold soul guidance, I'm able to give you this little book of breath work, the little book of breath work for free. And it is my sole purpose to be a healer. And it is my sole longing to make a contribution to your total well being right now. So ask me for a copy of the little book of breath work to lower your anxiety and learn how to breathe. But also ask yourself, how can I take my power back? Now, if you're listening to this story, you may recall a time in your life when your soul tried to speak with you loudly, clearly, insistently. Maybe you listened. Maybe you followed your soul guidance. But then on the other hand, maybe your ego was so successful in arguing that what you knew, felt, saw, or heard from your soul didn't make any sense, that you turned away from your own inner direction. Maybe you later on came to regret not following your intuition. Now, at age 61, after 27 years in natural healing as a professional medical intuitive healer, I've learned to trust my intuition because I know how my soul communicates with me. 
So hopefully today I can empower you to remove at least some of the blockages to you following your own soul guidance. Because to me, when you learn how to follow your soul guidance, this is part of how we take our power back. This is part of how we learn how to trust ourselves. So I'm gonna be sharing some of the information from my book, Unlimited Intuition Now. And again, if you don't like to read it, you can listen to the audiobook and uh, listen while you're commuting, exercising, or driving. Now, there's four different ways your soul communicates with you. The first is claircognizance. That's my primary gift, where you just know stuff. The second is clairaudience, where you hear stuff. The third is clairsentience, where you pick up information by feeling the energy, emotions, and vibe of a person, place, or thing. And the last is clairvoyance, where you receive information through your, from your soul through visions, inner pictures, signs in nature, or by quite literally seeing the energy around others, which is known as your aura. As I'm always saying, all of these four modes of soul guidance are equally important. Uh, but over time, what you'll discover is that one or two will come most easily to you. Now, it's really important in my view that you understand how your soul communicates with you so that when you receive the soul guidance, that you can trust yourself, take your power back and take the important actions, again, that lead to your well-being, to the well-being of your family and to your financial abundance. So to make matters just slightly complicated, there's different ways you receive information in different parts of your life. So you use one gift primarily for your soul communication. You use another gift for receiving information about your physical body. You use another gift for your family, the people under your roof, your tribe. And finally, you use your another gift in your work. So I'll use myself, for example. My soul communicates to me with clear cognizance. This is the same gift that the medical intuitive Edgar Casey had. Just like Edgar Casey, I do not need to see someone, put my hands on them, or even talk to them to know what is wrong or what will make that person better. For the past three years, I've been working with a healing center in Costa Rica run by the great healer, Darren McBratney. I do a complete medical intuitive reading for everyone who goes to that healing center, going over what I refer to as the five levels of healing, the physical body, the energy system, the emotions, the mind, and the soul. In my 10th book, Reading the Soul, which just came out, I explain what I look for at the soul level. Because again, you are a soul, <laughs> always, and your soul is directing everything that happens in your life. So before anybody ever gets to Costa Rica, they fill out a form. It may say, um, this is Joe Blow. I live in Seattle. I eat peanut butter and jelly for lunch, and I've been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. Then I will spend an hour, an hour and a half to write a full report on what's going on with your body, your energy system, your emotions, mind, and soul. And then I make specific recommendations about what will work to make that person better. When I'm working with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, I also do healing work to clear the issues that I find. So I work with people over time to get them better. It's incredibly rewarding and fun for me to be part of a team of healers dedicated to serving the planet. So sometimes I receive a photograph, other times I don't receive a photograph. And sometimes people will fill out their form in depth, other time they just give me their name, address, and birthday. But I use my clear cognizance to tune in to that person and what is going on, what their soul needs to understand, and what they need to, what steps you need to take at this point to move forward. Now, my second gift, the, use I, the gift I use for my body is clear audience. That means I will hear information specifically rated, related to my physical well-being. My third gift, the gift I use for my family, is clairsentience. That means I can tune in to anybody in my family and tell you how they feel, 
And um, since clairsentience is a gift for my home, my home is incredibly comfy. The dog sits on the couch. People show up, never want to leave. Even when you're the pest control inspector, after inspecting my home for bugs, said to me, your house has really great energy. And finally, my fourth gift, the gift I use in my work is clairvoyance. I will receive a picture, a symbol, an image. I will see the organs that are calling out for attention. Now, I understand how my gifts work and which gifts I use most often in particular areas. So when energy and information comes in, I understand what's happening. For you to le lead a soul-directed life, you must learn how your own intuitive guidance actually works. That's such an important concept. I'll say it again another way. If you don't understand how your soul communicates with you, you may waste a lot of time or even miss important signals. And I'll say it yet again another way. If you don't understand how your own intuition works, you may never learn how to trust yourself fully and completely. So let's go into the weeds now and learn more about claircognizance, clairaudience, clairsentience, and clairvoyance. And again, I'm giving you the short version today if you want more, and also uh, prayers that you can use to open up your soul guidance. You can read or listen to Unlimited Intuition Now by Katherine Kerrigan. So let's talk about claircognizance. What are the strengths of claircognizance? You just know stuff. You get advance warning. You know what you know with zero supporting evidence. You know information about topics you've never studied, people you've never met, places you've never been. When you want an answer, you receive the answer within 30 seconds. If it takes longer than that, it's your ego mind. And one of the challenges for being claircognizant is that we're always taught stop and think about it. Well, when you stop and think about things, that's your ego mind and your ego mind can drop in. Now, I love to learn. I was Phi Beta Kappa at Brown University. I'm always gathering information. I have tremendous respect for the scientific community. As I'm always saying, my brother's a doctor, my dad's a doctor, my grandfather was a doctor, my great-grandfather was a doctor, and my uncle was a doctor. If you need to go to a doctor, I'll refer you to one in a heartbeat, but there's other ways of receiving information and you are more than your physical body, which is why people come to me to understand what's going on in the bigger picture. Now, the downside of clear cognizance is there's no supporting evidence so people may think you're a bit crazy. You receive information so fast, it's easy to come off as brusque or blunt, even if you're not meaning to hurt anyone's feelings. And I always explain to people when they first work with me, hey, I'm blunt, I'm on your side, but this is gonna be pretty direct. In July 2005, I was in London. I was supposed to go into the city on a Thursday to see 10 clients who'd been scheduled for appointments. A few days before, every time I thought about going into the city, I knew I would have trouble getting back. I even went into Covent Garden on the tube the day before, a Wednesday. I went in, came back, no problem. But I canceled all 10 clients for that Thursday. And I'm sure that everybody was put out with me until terrorists blew up the subway that morning, killing over 50 people. I'll never forget, I was out for a walk, nothing on my schedule. I was enjoying the blue sky and the sunshine. I came back and like everyone else all over the UK, turned on the news and found out what had happened. My heart goes out to those people. That's clear cognizance, clear audience. Psychic hearing. What are the strengths of clear audience? You're an excellent public speaker. You're good at channeling. You hear what's not being said. You receive information very, very quickly, also within 30 seconds. Now the downside of clear audience, because you literally hear information inside your head, it's easy to confuse your soul guidance with your own thoughts. You receive information so quickly and communicate so rapidly, you may overlook how, what needs to be said. 
thereby inadvertently hurting other people, such as that shirt makes you look old, right? So years ago, I was at a stoplight. Maybe you had the same experience. The light turned green by all legal rights. It was my turn to move ahead. However, I heard very, very clearly, stop. And so I stopped. I remember looking around, I didn't see anything, but at the moment I stopped, a speeding car on the other side of the intersection ran the red light. And if I had been in the middle of the intersection, I would have been legally correct and also dead. That's clear audience, clear sentience. Now the strength of clairsentience is that it's probably the easiest of all the psychic gifts to develop. You pick up the vibe. You feel what other people are feeling. You're able to communicate kindly because you intuitively know what others are feeling and you're able to communicate in a way that matches the energy of the people that you're talking to. You have strong emotional intelligence. You're good at Reiki and other forms of energy healing, and you can read the energy layers of the body. The downside of clairsentience is that you may confuse what you're feeling with what other people are feeling. You lack good boundaries. You process other people's emotions, becoming easily overwhelmed, anxious, or depressed. And I think that it, this time during the coronavirus pandemic, when so many people are deeply afraid, when so many people are suffering from the virus and dying and experiencing the loss of their loved ones, it's very, a very, very challenging time for people who are high in clairsentience. And as I'm always saying, if you're high in clairsentience at this time, you really want to up your game so that you can stay in your own center and be the lighthouse and be a source of strength for others rather than going into the vibration of fear. Um, and again, if you're in fear, you're not able to access your soul guidance. So people uh, who are high in clairsentience may suffer from low self-esteem because you're not honoring your own emotional intelligence. I was Phi Beta Kappa at an Ivy League college here in the US, and I believe that emotional intelligence is the highest form of intelligence. Um, you're easily overwhelmed and don't know how to stay out of other people's stuff. World crises are bad news. Now, when I'm doing a medical intuitive reading, I can often feel where the energy is stuck in a person's body. I'll say, you're feeling congestion in your throat and chest. That's clear sentience. Clairvoyance. You receive information and in pictures, symbols, or signs in nature. You can see other people's energy field. You're good at interior decorating, art, and outer beauty. You make the world a beautiful place. You're good at planning because you can visualize how things need to be. Now, the weaknesses of the clairvoyant gift include because you're often stuck in your own picture of the world, you often need to visualize not just one, but two alternatives to get unstuck. And I think that at this time during the coronavirus pandemic, a lot of people are suffering because they're stuck in the old picture of the world and the old picture of how they feel, you know, their life needs to be or how the world needs to be. And we have to remember that the only thing in, that's constant in life is actually change. I look at my little garden. If you visit katherinekerrigan.com, you'll know that I'm obsessed with flowers and orchids. And this little tiny corner of the earth where I live, my garden, it astounds me about how much change one little spot can experience month to month, year to year, season to season. And it's a reminder to me that we are always changing. And part of that change that needs to happen is we need to change our picture. When you're high in clairvoyance, one of the downsides may be if you can't see it, you don't trust it. And this can really get in the way of you following your own soul guidance. So you're, you may be so focused on making things appear beautiful on the outside 
you often overlook how things will feel underneath. So for example, you may see those really hot shoes and then you put them on your feet and walk for half an hour and go, oh my gosh, what can I, what was I thinking? These don't feel good. So for me, I, re I often receive signs from nature. In March of 2020, a barred owl came and sat in a tree in my garden. I could go for years searching for owls and never seeing a single one. And yet this year, I have owls following me everywhere, following me when I walk my dog, steering deep into my soul, spreading their wings and flying directly over my head. I just went camping this weekend and I heard them, the owls hooting all night. So I know that I'm currently working with the owl power animal, symbol of wisdom, ability to see in the darkness, hearing what isn't being said, and fearless magic. That's clairvoyance. So again, the subject of this talk is about how to take your power back. Now, as you have heard me describe these four different psychic gifts, you might find yourself relating most closely with one or two of them. Um, in my work as a medical intuitive healer, I also identify how your soul communicates with you and how also you get in the way of your own soul guidance and what you can do to remove the blocks to living a more soul-directed life. So anything that gets in the way of you listening to your soul and trusting yourself keeps you out of your power. So what gets in the way of your soul communication? Your shadow. Uh, I've written articles about how your shadow keep, can ruin your life. Your ego mind. Uh, going back to your shadow, one of my clients, I was describing the concept of shadow to her years ago, and she says, oh, that's my evil twin. I'm like, exactly, that's your evil twin. We all have one. Uh, your ego mind, thinking you have to know everything. I remember in my 50s, I came to the point where I said to a friend, I, I said, you know, I realize I don't know anything. And he said to me, congratulations, that's a sign of spiritual growth. So when we set aside what we think we know and allow our soul to communicate with you, that's when your soul guidance kind of comes in. Wanting to be right. Who doesn't enjoy being right, at least occasionally? Wanting to know how everything is all going to turn out before you put in any effort. And by the way, we are going to be okay. We're going to get through this. And part of the way that we're going to get through this is by people like you who are listening, learning how to listen to your soul and take your power back. Learn to trust yourself. Learn to know what you know, hear what you hear feel what you feel, and see what you see, and take action on your soul guidance. Not making time to listen to your soul, being too busy, not trusting yourself, wanting to appear perfect, wanting to appear like you're a spiritual person, even though you don't allow yourself to be guided by your own soul. Lack of a personal practice to connect with your soul. In other words, no prayer or meditation time fear of being alone, fear of facing what you're really feeling, fear of hearing what you don't want to hear, fear of the supernatural, thinking that if you listen to your soul, what you hear might go against your religion. <clears throat> By the way, I grew up in the Episcopal Church. I have great respect for religion of all uh, faiths. Repetitive thoughts, worries, and obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety and depression, and again, fear. Because when you're in fear, you're in fight, flight, or freeze, you're operating out of the reptilian brain, and you're not in neutral to receive your soul guidance. Not knowing how to get to neutral so that you can be open to receiving whatever information your soul wants to share. Living in survival mode so that you think everything's about money. Not trusting the universe to take care of you taking drugs, either psychiatric drugs or what I refer to as extremely stupid drugs, marijuana, cocaine, LSD, etc. Thinking you have to go somewhere else or take something to receive your inner visions or hear what your soul wants to say, 
You can just be at home wherever you are or sit under a tree and listen to your soul. Being an uncontrolled empath, not having good boundaries, overusing your psychic gifts for others and not enough for yourself. Thinking you're all alone in the world when you're actually surrounded 24 seven by angels. And um, if you go to katherinekerrigan.com, you can see a link with photographs of angels that I've taken around my home and healing room with my iPhone. Post-traumatic stress disorder, being trapped by old dramas and never wanting, never having overcome your wounded child. Wanting everything your soul communicates to you to make sense immediately, which it won't frequently. Not being okay with the mystery of life and wanting to have your entire life mapped out ahead of time. What would be the fun in that? So thank you so much for listening. And I strongly encourage you now, as you come to the conclusion of this talk, to set your intention to take your power back. So I'm gonna give you some affirmations to work with. I take my power back from coronavirus. I take my power back from the global recession. I take my power back from anyone that I've given my power away to for any reason at any time in my life. I give myself permission to follow my soul guidance. I give myself permission to follow my own soul purpose in this lifetime. I honor my strength. I honor my wisdom. I now move forward. Thank you so much for listening. This is Katherine Kerrigan medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. And remember, when you take your power back, miracles happen and natural healing occurs. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next time.